Okay. What's going on, everybody? My name is Mang. And it is time for some more Cataclysm. Because it has been a while since I uploaded some playthroughs of this. Um, <clears throat> so I'm not really, this is not going to be a, a basic introduction to Cataclysm at this point. Uh, you'll have to go back and watch uh, my earlier play. Like if you just go to Mang Plays Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead, I'm sure the first video was a much more, much better introduction. If you're not familiar with the game. Uh, but anyways. <clears throat> this time we are going to be doing bow only. So, the only way that I can intentionally damage another creature is through the usage of bows. Archery. Not crossbows. No crossbows. That's a whole different playthrough. Um, so, bows only. And... Just again, to kind of limit the uh, the scope of the, the playthrough to make sure we have a... a basic enough cutoff point uh a goal uh we're gonna go with the same thing that i did for the unarmed only and we're just gonna go with skeletal juggernaut the goal is to kill a skeletal juggernaut with the bow only um and it takes you know with the def default settings it takes a number of weeks before skeletal juggernauts even sort of start appearing <clears throat> so there's already, like, you know, you have to wait a while before you can even see them, uh, let alone actually kill one. Now, Skeletal Juggernauts are not, like, the end-all, be-all enemy, of course, but it's, like, for me and for many players, it's, like, the first kind of really scary enemy. It's it's a big boy. You know, he, he's, he's much larger than other enemies. He's very intimidating-looking. And if you're unprepared, a Skeletal Juggernaut can easily just eviscerate you. Uh, but, you know, it's a doable challenge. I don't have to go into a lab or anything to kill him. I don't have to do anything outlandish. We just have to kill one. Now, uh, that's, of course, easier said than done with a bow. Uh, because bows are, as you can imagine... Uh, shooting an arrow at a massive skeleton. Not really going to do a whole lot. Uh, but there are, you know, some special arrows involved, such as explosive arrows. I'm not making it a requirement to kill the Juggernaut with an explosive arrow, but I think that would be cool if we can manage it. <laughs> now, normally I enjoy, at this point, playing Cataclysm Bright Knights, uh, which is a fork of this that um you know keeps things a lot more simple uh strips out some realism in exchange of just like you know just just have fun don't worry too much about realism with certain aspects you know like pockets and uh, certain things with like freezing food and um weariness and books you know there's a lot of little things <clears throat> and as time goes on, it's becoming like a very different game in a lot of ways. And I like Bright Nights a lot. <clears throat> but um, this time we're going to be playing Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. The, uh, the main version, the more popular version. Uh, not for any specific reason, really, except that recently I've been doing a run in Dark Days Ahead. I just picked it up just to see kind of how it's been going how it's different and i've got a really good run going with it and uh, you know it hasn't been a bad experience so we're gonna try it <clears throat> uh i will say that archery is better in many ways on bright nights because bright nights doesn't give a fuck about realism so i mean to a degree so you know Arrows can just go straight through Kevlar without really being bothered too much. Whereas Dark Days Ahead, 
realistically, an arrow can't really go through Kevlar, so it does nothing. <clears throat> um, now, there is a change somewhat recently, a few months ago, I think. And if it wasn't for that change, I wouldn't even consider doing this challenge on Dark Days Ahead. Uh, but the change was basically it added, like, critical hit points, critical hit locations for enemies. Because, obviously, like, a soldier is not covered head to toe in Kevlar. You know, it, they have openings, in, like the face and things like that. Um, and you could get an arrow to hit them in the face and bypass all the Kevlar. And... So yeah, um, I don't know all the specifics of how it functions, but I do know that it is possible now to take down armored targets with arrows by hitting these critical hit locations. I think it's, you know, a chance based on uh, how precise your aiming is and, and things like that. But uh, yeah, so we're just going to see how it goes. I have not used archery in Dark Days Ahead in quite a while, so we're just going to see. Uh, first of all, our world... Irwinville, uh, very basic, very few mods, um, you know, mod support for experimental Dark Days Ahead is, is slim. <sighs> so basically we just have like uh, Blaze Industries, which does some vehicle stuff, Magicalism, which I really don't need, I don't know why I always play with Magicalism, uh, but it's there. Um, Mythical Martial Arts we won't really be using, Speedy Dex. This increases your character's speed the higher their dex is. Um, stats through skills, stats through kills. This is a little overboard. I'll generally always play with stats through skills. Because um, it's just nice. Stats through kills is a little overboard, but it's kind of optional. Even with the mod on. Because uh, you have to purposefully go into your stat screen and spend the points. So we could just forget about it you know on my current playthrough that i'm doing i have not put any points in i've just forgotten about it it's fine all right so custom character uh we're gonna be cheesing it a little bit as far as character build i mean i'm not gonna make some weakling <clears throat> but i decided we're not gonna start with a bow because that adds to the uh makes it a bit more interesting to start uh, so for scenario, maybe wilderness. Yeah, wilderness is probably fine. Uh, profession. Survivor's good. Maybe a backpacker. Yeah, I could see that working. Let's do a backpacker. It makes sense. He's out in the wilderness. Backpacker. He's going to make himself a bow. Uh, skills. Or background. I don't know. There's always just so many. Like fucking practical jokes. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, yeah, I could take like target shooting. I could take archery. I mean, you do have to spend points, it's not like free or anything. Um, I guess. We're still not going to start with a bow, and we still don't have, like, all the everything we need to make a great bow or anything like that. And we're out in the wilderness, so we're not going to find a great bow. So it's kind of just makes it so that when we do get a hold of a bow, we're decent with it to start. But I don't know. Maybe it's more interesting to really build myself up. To have never touched a bow in my life. Uh, what is bush? Oh, backpacking. 
Uh, nomad, I always hate. Bushcraft's pretty good. Outdoorsman, survival, fabrication, food handling. You get fiber twisting principles of lead working, rope making principles, trapping, basic napping, and carving. That's a lot of proficiencies just out the gate. Let's do bushcraft then. Um, okay. So we'll take some of the usual bad shit. Um, heavy sleeper. Uh, you're not going to go complete ma min max or anything, but take some of these poor mana regeneration. Um, squeamish. No, let's not be ugly. A weak stomach. Hmm. I don't know. That might be okay. We don't want to go crazy. Uh, for stats, strength, very important for bows. Uh, bows have a minimum strength requirement to use. Because, um, you know, you have to be, you got to be fit to pull back that string on some of the bows. Now, really good modern bows, obviously, like compound bows, they've got all sorts of mechanisms involved that make it so you don't have to be too strong. But, like, the great bow, I think, is, like, 15 strength, um... Because that was like, you know, back when great bows were being used, that was your fucking profession for life. And your arm was fucking jacked. So, I don't know if we'll ever get to 15 strength, but I think we want to start with 12. Um, I think we also want perception to be pretty decent. And we probably want to take... I usually like taking fast learner on just about every character I make, but it's not strictly necessary. Uh, we do have outdoorsman, just decreases morale penalties for being wet. Um, quick is probably the best one. I, I would say it's probably the best trait. You're just 10% faster at pretty much everything. Yeah. I mean, there's no martial arts or anything like that involving bows. I think somebody talked about... I think there's, like, in real life, there's, like, kind of a Japanese martial art focused around archery, but I don't believe that's implemented. So we'll just go with that. And I think we're good. Let's be... I mean, let me think of uh, famous archers. You've got Legolas or Katniss Everdeen. I think those... Oh, Robin Hood, I guess. Funny that that came third to me. That's That's not good. Um, are there any other famous archers that I'm not thinking of? Probably. But let's be, um, let's be female. It'll just be Katniss Everdeen, I guess. It's fair. It's fair. Uh, I think we're set. All right. Uh, we are near a Triffid Grove. That's pretty bad. We're in a campground, which is pretty good. Yep. Triffid's right out the door. That's pretty bad. We're going to have to bolt. Oh, 
probably gonna die. That was super fucking loud, by the way. Uh, no. I will not watch the last. That was pretty shitty. Uh, let me lower the volume, though. We'll just do it in here. Uh, alright, well, let's try that again, shall we? I mean, I thought Wilderness was just going to dump me somewhere out in the wild. But remember, there's never any there's never any sort of checks as far as like hazards in your vicinity. Backpacker. I took bushcraft. We got this. Uh, I took Heavy Sleeper, definitely. I took more mana regeneration. I took Squeamish. And Weak Stomach. We got Quick. Bow Strength. 11 Perception. That's what it was. Uh, then we had this. I could save this as a template, but we're going to be confident. that uh let's do a field feel better about a field yeah all right nothing nothing within my direct vicinity uh the triffid grove up there though uh we've got a hazardous waste sarcophagus over there a mine over there down here we have a mansion that would be a nice thing to clear out all right, so generally, you know, finding some sort of safe haven of shelter is a priority, but I want to make sure we have a bow. The most basic bow is the survival bow. Weak bow crudely crafted from a single uncured wood stave. Weak and wildly inaccurate, but easy to make. Requires a minimum of six strength. Um, has a base <laughs> range damage of two and a range of eight. It is very shit. But it's, I mean, you know, again, per the rules of the challenge, I cannot do damage with anything but a bow. So we need a cutting tool, we need a stick, and we need some cordage. So let's head over, not to the giant aphids. Alright, so let's start knocking stuff down. There we got some long sticks, some splintered wood. Let's just rummage through all this. You never know what you might find. Uh, so... Yeah, CDDA is... You know, with each sort of update they've put out for experimental and everything, it's just getting... More and more intensive with, like, the uh, intricacies, the realism, and whatnot. So there's a lot going on with, like, microsystems and, and things like that. Um, even more so than when I first started playing this, which is kind of mind-boggling. Um... And it's cool. But, you know, I'm glad that Bright Nights exists. Because you don't always want uber realism. And having to keep track of everything. 
All right, let's see here. Now we've got a bone. Okay, with a rock. Yeah, I should be able to. Let me just find a rock. There it is. So the rock. That's a hammering tool of level one. And then we can use that to make a bone shiv. And that's a rank one cutting tool. We're already very hungry, so that's great. Now, in Bright Nights, hunger is very simple. There's really no, like, calorie counting or anything like that. Uh, when you're hungry, you eat food that has calories and, until you're not hungry. And then after a while, you'll become hungry again. That's it. <laughs> you know, it's very simple. It's like uh, it's like a Fallout survival mode kind of thing. It's it's very basic. Dark days ahead. <laughs> Not basic. In dark days ahead, if I go over right. So dark days ahead has calories, uh, but it also has satiety. And you can see here these bird eggs have. Like, the highest tier of satiety. Five, five marks of satiety out of five. Um, and so, what you want to consume, generally, in Dark Days Ed, is sort of what you want to consume in real life. And that's um, calorie-dense foods. Meaning, you don't want to eat empty calories. You don't want to consume, like, chocolate bars all day. Um, because if, if it doesn't fill you up, but it gives you a lot of calories, you're going to get overweight. And you're going to have to continually consume more and more food and more and more calories uh, because you're never really getting filled up. Uh, again, this is not in Bright Nights whatsoever. It's just calories in and you're done. Uh, and so, you do, um, burn a lot of calories in Cataclysm by just doing things, unless you're sitting in your house, like, reading books all day. You know, if you're out and about, like, fighting zombies or cutting down trees or constructing stuff, I mean, you burn a lot of calories. But, uh... Yeah, it's it's a it's interesting. Uh, okay, so are the main thing that we're looking for? I mean, I don't have to construct the bow out of everything in the nature because getting plant fiber can be a little tricky. Okay, I don't want to. I don't want to use the bone sheath for that. Bone shiv. Uh, so we're very hungry. But there isn't much you just want to eat out in the wild without cooking it. Right. I do have, I think... Yeah, I have fiber twisting proficiency already, so that's pretty big. Uh, so it's six... I think I need... What did I need? For the bow. Twelve short cordage. We've already got that. It's gonna take an hour. Okay. And then... We take this over here. Uh, cut up a long... No. Disassemble long stick. Okay, good. Survival bow. Good. Done. We have the bow. Now, we don't have a quiver. That's a whole other problem. Um, who knows when we'll be able to make a quiver. <clears throat> but, first problem solved. Now we need to make ammo. Best we can do is just the crude wooden arrow. That is made out of sticks. We get 10 per stick. 
It's it's yeah. It's basically just a stick with a notch to put onto the string. It's got a like a point seven five damage multiplier, so it's re it's really terrible. Um, but it's what we got. All right. There we have it. We have a nice big hiking backpack, which is massive, but it means we can actually hold arrows in it. Uh, so that was pretty nice. If we had started as a survivor with a messenger bag or whatever, we wouldn't have been able to do that. I would have had to haul my arrows around. Uh, okay. So let's grab uh, some food here. I really don't think we're ready to take on a mansion. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think so. Well, let's go see what we can find. It's not a mansion. Seem like the mansion is connected to anything. I might want to make a fire and just make some shit. Although, I don't have anything to heat up water in. Hmm. Yeah, we really should try and find some sort of. There's a hunting blind here. Nope. Okay. Ooh. A dairy farm. If it's clear, that's pretty good. Water strider. Probably fuck me up. Alright, I think... Oh, shit! A fucking cougar came out of nowhere, man! Oh, my God! Putting all this pressure on my... It shredded my torso. Oh my god, I'm still bleeding now. Whew. One damage. Oh god, now the cows are angry? Why? Jesus! What the fuck? I didn't do anything to you cows! All right, well, we're already injured, so that's great. Shit. Just catch my breath. I don't know what the fucking cow's problem is. There's an arc welder in this dairy farm. 
That's pretty good. All right, well, we can eat some uh, toastums. Got some cola. Not much else to drink here on a dairy farm. I'm sure there's plenty of milk out in those cows. Jesus, man. Yeah, I don't know what, like, sent him off. Other than just the fact that I was doing, like, hostile actions. There we go, we tamed one. Got that one. Got that one. Okay. I'm tamed it in the sense of it's not going to attack us, I don't think. you all on my side. Come here, cow. There you go. Alright, now theoretically I should be able to shoot this cougar without them s popping off. used up all 30 arrows on this thing. I mean, we uh, we made some progress. If I let it in, it might attack the cows, but I, I don't really know. I mean, we're building up our skill a little bit here. Uh, okay, hold on. Let's try and make some more. Um, actually getting sticks from anything but trees. Okay. It gets staying over there. I don't think an hour. Oh man, this takes a while. Um. I mean, it's not big deal, I guess. I just don't want to do it out where the cougar can get me. Okay. Uh, let's, let's make them all, I guess. Stupid ass cougar doesn't know he can jump over the fence. Alright, now you just hold it down.
Oh, he ran off. He's he's bleeding out. I could go chase him down. Dumbass cougar. You're so stupid. One of the changes that they made somewhat recently for Dark Days Ahead. They used to have uh, the, the E key. The E key was like examine. And with examine... Um, you could do, like, everything. It was kind of a catch-all button. Any sort of interaction you wanted to have with items uh, near you, you just pressed E. And that's how it is for Bright Nights as well. Yeah. Why am I doing this? Uh, but Dark Days Ahead changed it because they said it was causing a lot of bugs for you to be able to pick stuff up uh, with the E key. So they changed it so that you could no longer pick stuff up with E. You had to use G the G key for get. And they announced that, and I was like, well, thank God I... Uh, Thank God I, I play Bright Nights. But now, you know, now that I've been playing it for a little while, you know, the G key comes pretty naturally. You know, you, know, you, you learn how to deal with everything. Nothing is, is that difficult to adapt to. Alright, so we got our... Uh, we got our animal. We got the cougar finally. And we got a a squirrel as a nice bonus. God no, yeah, that's why I forgot about this bullshit. Hauling anything with animals around is a nightmare. Okay. Uh Alright, so there we go. We got from the cougar. 27 bones, 4 bone marrow, 9 chunks of fat, 27 chunks of meat, 2 lungs, 3 raw brains, a sweet bread, 28 scraps of meat, and a stomach. Oh, and 13 sinew. You know, overall pretty good. Uh, we did kind of pay for it, though. Ooh, a pudding. That'll make us feel better. Mostly our issue is water. Oh, nice. Bandages. Pop an aspirin. An empty toilet, so no water from there. Although I think... Well, I should be able to just milk. Should be able to milk the cows. Uh, attach bag to cow? Milk cow. Uh, pour into a container. There's some left over. Yeah. Hot raw milk, baby. What every growing boy needs. So, we need a container. We've got a ceramic cup. That's pretty lame. Got a plastic cup. Also... Quite lame. Couple cans. <laughs> Pouring your raw, hot milk into some aluminum cans to drink out of. Lovely. So ideally we'd have, like, a water... Yeah, nothing. Okay. Um... 
be smashing this with my bow. I've got a rock. Uh, chunks of steel and scrap metal. Okay. That's that. Okay, bulk. Yeah, I think we gotta disassemble that. So, that's, that's doable, though. We take... Let me grab this. Yes, yes, I'm well aware. Uh, okay, so we're looking for the crowbar. I need a pipe. Yeah. Let's try and smash this apart. Thought I was wielding my rock. What happened to my rock? Fuck you. Oh, there's a plank here. What am I talking about? Plank's so much better. There you go. Uh, no pipes. Copper tubings. Pipe fittings. No pipe. I'm telling you, pipes are hard to come by. And yeah, for some reason I cannot unlock this door from the inside. Make of that what you will. Both doors. I'd have to fucking either break them down or lockpick them. Okay, no pipes. No, nothing here, I think, would give me a pipe. Fertilizer. A socket wrench set. Sure. Um. Oh, there we go. We got pipes. Nice. Pipes to spare. That's what you like to... Fucking cows! Get out of here! Yeah, I know what the footsteps are. Don't bother me. Okay. Crowbar. Crafted. Uh, hammer. Of course, we need cordage. Well... There should be a string. There it is. A hammer. Use a stick. Done. Then the screwdriver. Done. Take those three things and we can disassemble anything we want. Including this bulk tank. Boom. Did not give us an actual tank. Okay. How about these? Uh, no. Okay. That's fair. You need any type of rope to leash the cow. You'd think there would be ropes on hand on a dairy farm. Like, why... Why would there not be? Okay, maybe... Here, here, here. Maybe if I just hang out in here for long enough, maybe some cows will come in. Come on, cows. Don't you want to come into the milking room? Damn. Damn, damn. Well, does this bike work? Oh, it's brand new. Holy shit. Well, that's pretty good. We can go check out the gas station, I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, I want to make this sort of my home base. I'm feeling confident about the home base status here. Shit, I crashed into a cow. What are the odds? Um, yeah. What? Oh, come on. Can I really not 
take the bike through here? You cannot. Oh my god. No. What's the point of having a gate if you can't take a bike through it? Uh, I didn't really want to go on foot. The only other option then is to actually destroy the gate. That seems like a pretty shitty option. It's getting late. I say fuck it. Let's just gather up every container I can get. And we'll milk a cow. If I dump out this gallon jug, that could work. There you go. Let's take this. How about you? You want to be milked. Seriously? Because it doesn't have a cap, so I actually have to hold it to use it as a container. Or did I not even take it? Damn it. Alright, well, wield it just in case. Milk cow. Boom. Done. We've got a bunch of milk. Drink up, Katniss. Alrighty. Good. I mean, yeah, so theoretic, I think they produce milk, like, daily. <laughs> you know, they produce, like, you get a lot of milk out of just, like, a couple cows. Um... Let's see. What are our steps here? Well, obviously we want to make... Now the short bow. Which is strictly better in every way. Uh, for that, we need pretty much the exact same thing. As a survival bow. Just takes a lot longer. Because we do not have a bowery proficiency. But that's okay. We've got nothing but time. So we need a stick. Or a plank. We can just use a plank. Um, okay, there we go. We got planks there. No, don't have to. No, really. You really don't have to do that. Cordage. It's a little trickier. We can turn on our smartphone light. Deconstruct this. That gives us 31 cotton patches. Oh yeah, so this was just like today. This was like today that they merged this change. Uh, they got rid of rags. I mean, technically, they just renamed rags to cotton patches, but they did, like, this whole tailoring, streamline thing where everything is just patches now. It's different patches. And so rags are gone, and it's just patches all the way down. You know, you got to go with the flow. Uh, so cotton patches. I think we should be able to disassemble that. Okay, this becomes cotton scraps. So that's different. Cotton scraps, we can then turn into one thread? After two minutes? One thread? Uh... Yeah, and it's still 50 thread to make a short string. Damn, so you used to be able to disassemble one rag into 80 thread. That seems rough. That seems very rough. Unless there was a way for me to turn... Nope. I was going to say if there's a way to turn patches or something directly into strings. 
but no. Uh, okay. Uh, two long strings. I mean, we'll basically just take down another uh, couple curtains. That's the easiest way to do it. Yeah, okay. So, fuck off, cow. Uh, we're just going to tear down these curtains. It, it's the least time-consuming option. Okay. Now we can make the short bow. Uh, we're not going to be able to make it tonight, but we'll get started. Okay. So if you can see there in the upper right, you can see where it says moderate in, um, I don't know, what color is that? Salmon? Salmon coloring, moderate. That's our weariness. So there's a difference between, uh, tiredness, as far as, like, needing to sleep, and your weariness, which is based on just, like, kind of mental fatigue, uh, from, like, doing certain activities for a long period of time. Or uh, it can be physical fatigue as well, I guess. Um, just and it's sort of like a general fatigue, but it doesn't necessarily correlate to needing to sleep, but it kind of correlates. Because if you're really weary, then you probably want to sleep. But, you know. It's like another level. So it's like, if you sit there all day doing, like, very light activities all day. Different activity. Because if you just sit there and read one book the whole day, you will be very weary. But I guess maybe that wouldn't actually make you tired. So in that case, it might be tricky to fall asleep because you're not actually tired. But I don't know. It's weird. Because for me, in real life, I don't do anything all day every day. You know, my whole... my You know, my activity is always light. Every day. And I always fall asleep at the same time every night. So I don't know. I don't think you have to like do strenuous stuff during the day to be to have to fall asleep. But I whatever. Let's uh get some more raw milk in our body. Uh so So here we have the issue of I have not really consumed Oh no. It's minimal calories cuz we ticked over to a new day. Oh, actually, we should have cooked all that meat. Shit. That's probably going to go bad now. Oh, well. What are you going to do? Let's fall asleep. Luckily, we're a heavy sleeper. Oh, we still got woken up. Yeah, we need, like, uh, earplugs. Uh, okay. So now we're very well hydrated. Our milk has gone rotten already, because raw milk does not last long without being kind of pasteurized or chilled. Uh, but our meat is still there, so we can cook that. To do that in these tight confines... deconstruct that. I'm going to set up a firewood source there. Uh, okay. Now, I don't know if I actually have a way to start fires. Connect disconnected oven to grid. Okay. Why did you ask me that? It's not... No, it's not on. It, the, there's no grid here. There's no electricity in this house. I think... 
Uh, so that's in both games now. They, both uh, Dark Days Ahead and Bright Nights have added electrical grids to the game as far as like buildings are concerned. And you can actually tap into that. There's no... There's no electrical... You know, like the power plants and everything. That's all offline. So there's no actual electricity. Um, but it allows you to have like a framework in place so that if you have like solar panels on the roof or wind turbines or something like that um it's all wired up so that you can just plop that down connect it to the building put a battery down connect that to the building and then it's a functions as kind of like a big car you know as far as cataclysm is concerned <sighs> um but yeah we don't care about that Disconnected oven. It's weird. I'm I'm not used to having an oven as like an appliance, you know, it's just like a usually it's just a place to cook food where you can light a fire and it won't spread. So I'm not actually sure what to do. I don't know. I mean, I don't have a... Well, I guess maybe you can still start a fire there. But that's... That seems kind of risky. Oh, <laughs> uh, God. Alright. Let's try it. Okay, I automatically moved the plank over to the oven. And it says there's nothing to light there. That's so weird. Why would they... Why would they make it so that you can't use an oven... ...as just a cooking location? Hold on, let me... search Basically, they just say, don't connect it to the grid. But how do I not connect it to the grid? Uh, Alright, I guess we just have a useless oven here. Alright, well that's just kind of annoying. Uh, hopefully they fix that. Uh, can I make a brazier? Yes. Well, that's always the old standby, isn't it? Alright. Start a fire there. And we will make cooked meat. I don't think I can eat all of it before it goes bad, so it's kind of pointless. Just make, like, ten. Probably can't even eat that. Um. Okay. Extinguish the fire. Eat some of your meat. And let's go to milk again. Am I 
I still... Yeah, okay. Unload this onto the ground. Milk. Good. Thank you for your milk. We thank you. So this, I'm going to cook. So this still spoils after a day. Okay, what are the really downsides of eating raw milk then? Couldn't be any fresher unless you drank it straight from the cow, which might upset it. Depending on your dietary sensibilities, you might want to pasteurize or even boil this before drinking. Um, now I know in real life, they really don't recommend drinking raw milk, although people did it for centuries. I think, I don't, yeah, I don't know if there's any... I think maybe it's just like... Uh, I feel like you can use raw milk for... Oh, maybe not. Hold on. Okay. Uh, milk. No, okay. You can use milk once you've cooked it for a lot more recipes. Alright. Let's just make the milk. Okay. Okay. Not that we could make anything with it, but somebody could. Alright, anyways. We will drink my fresh hot milk. It doesn't really quench your thirst that well. Which is bullshit. Um, yeah, the fat's probably going to go to waste because I don't have any sort of cooking utensil. Well, this fucking farmer... How does he not have, like, a single pan in his house? Bullshit! Let's work on our bow. Alright. We've got a bow. Short bow. Excellent. And shoot it a little bit farther. Can we make any better arrows? Um, yeah, simple wooden arrows with a fire. This is the fire-hardened and sharpened tip. Now, for this, we need plastic of some description, or cardboard, or duct tape, or cash cards, aluminum foil. We also need sinew, uh, bone glue... I can't even make bone glue yet. Shit. You have to sit here and make soapy water. Uh, or you need salt water. This isn't a great base at this point because there's just very little here. So we're going to have to expand. We're going to have to go out into the world. Um, I guess I could make ten of these nicer arrow, arrow, arrows. That's about it. Sharpened bone. It's a barb? Oh, for magicalism. Okay. Uh, yeah, simple wooden arrow. Make it up. Okay. We're very hungry again. We've already consumed 1,700 calories today. But we're very hungry. So we're going to eat more chunks of meat. And drink a little bit more milk. Oh, yeah, milk. Okay. Okay. Let's dump off a bunch of bullshit here. All this... All this bullshit we got. Not the milk. 
the rubber hoses, gallon jug of milk. Okay. Oh, let's grab our good arrows. All right, got all that. So, uh, oh, there's a military vehicle here, a cargo truck. It's pretty busted, nothing in it. It's a giant aphids, a giant rattlesnake. Nothing I want to fuck with. Oh, a zombie. Okay, here we go. We got range 10 on this bad boy. There we go. Nope. Now we can fire. Fire! Okay, that took a long time to aim. Fire! Seven damage. Miss. Might not want to do precise aiming. Maybe do like careful aiming. It's very tiring. Okay. Well, it's actually bleeding out. Come on. Bleed out, you son of a bitch. It's still bleeding out. Yeah! There we go. Huzzah! Some binoculars we can use. A garter sheath. Ooh. Why do you have this? For your candy cigarettes? <laughs> the hell? Alright, we got one. So yeah, the range? Terrible. Damage? Terrible. Stamina usage? Terrible. Overall... We are in rough shape. But we got one. Let's get another. This is terrible. <laughs> this is why we took quick, though. We're faster than him. So we can kite him. There you go. I want to kite him to get some stamina back. One damage. My god. Seven damage. Embedded in him. Uh, he's got some minor bleeding going on. Why am I hearing thumps? What is a thump? Bleed out, you son of a bitch. Alright, fuck you. Damn it.
Yeah. Uh, 25 bullets. Uh, no gun, and even if he did have one, we wouldn't use it. Okay. Whew. It is rough. Uh, because this is with already starting with some archery skill, although not much. We have one in archery. We've got one in marksmanship. And I think we have... No, we don't even have basic archer's form. We have 33% of basic archer's form. Why didn't I get all my stamina up first? Okay, now we're good. Alright, third victim. Here we go. I hope you're enjoying this content. damage good hit what is that thump sound reflects off his thick hide <laughs> why why does a guy have thick hide yeah quick a quick just being faster than them is is so critical It's getting easier. It's getting easier. We're getting a hang of it. Yeah, I mean, normally I wouldn't bother. Normally I would not bother. Oh, shit. Tough zombie. That's a bit much. Although, if we're faster than him, I guess it doesn't really matter. We have enough arrows. Although stamina is a concern. Uh, normally you wouldn't even bother using a fucking short bow. Like, zombies are not that terrifying. If you're really that worried, just get a spear. Cade zombie, those are even slower. Yeah. Weak-ass damage. There we go. There we go. Got him. Um, yep. I mean, none of this is really, like... We're not killing them for the loot. Got. What else you got? And some of these cars might work. That would be good. I'm up. close, but no cigar, my friend. I mean, you'll notice we're not, like, ever missing, almost. Misses are very uncommon. It's more likely you just do one damage. Uh, still got plenty of arrows. Uh, Rottweiler. Those are fast. 
lot of zombies at this gas station. Grab one. There we go. It's all open road here, so we're good. Ooh, that was reflected. That's not so good. Definitely can't handle a troll. A laptop. I don't know what use we'd have for that, but... Looking almost at archery, too. Very exciting. No, yeah, yeah, okay. some sort of glitch or something I keep finding another simple wooden arrow even though I'm on my last oh it's not using okay no I understand what I was doing adjustable wrench I don't know if I need that Okay, we did hit archery too, so that's very nice. 54% uh, for our basic archer's form. We did get level 2 marksmanship. This is all good. Uh, we still have 32 arrows. Still good. That's a tedious process, but I, you know, I, I've talked about this before where it's like, yes, you can just start as like a soldier and have like combat armor and uh, uh, a baton and martial arts and a gun and you can just stomp. You can literally just go into a town and hold down tab until everything is dead on the first day. I've done it, but that's not, you know, it's not what cataclysm is about. Not about winning. <laughs> Here we have a zombie child. They're even slower because they're little fucking kids. They are not to be feared. Except for the morale pen penalties. Apparently Katniss Everdeen feels bad. No, actually she didn't. Is that because it died of blood loss? I didn't actually kill it? I mean, I'll take it. actually pretty tired at this point turns out we didn't get a great night's sleep and shooting a bow a bunch of times is actually tiring
Okay. Um, so moderately weary. It's a 1.33 times penalty for movement. Or for active, you know, while well, you're, okay. Hmm. So it's not great. We don't really want to keep going. But we didn't really get anything from this trip other than experience. But that's, you know, that's kind of enough. We don't want to get too greedy here. Still have our health after all. so easy killing these zombies but it would be very easy to die as well especially with a rottweiler and a tough zombie in there didn't kill this brainless zombies target practice Uh, uh. uh, no controls. That's gas, though. We need some gas. That's definitely not drivable. That's probably not drivable. Nope. Got a first aid kit in it though, a bottle jag, cigarettes. I don't recall, does Katniss Everdeen smoke cigarettes in the movies? Uh, this does not have wheels or an engine. Uh, this has wheels and an engine. No seat though. Damn. This, this is so close to being good. All we'd have to do is swap out the seat, and we'd have a... Uh... We'd have a nice electric car. Removing the seat, though, requires mechanics, too. Damn. Easier said than done. Oh my, there's a Mego fucking tower over there. Ugh. Me no likey. Alright. I guess we'll just take that as a small victory for the day. Um... Tough. It's tough being this remote and like leveling up fabrication and things like that. It's doable, I guess. Our meat went rotten. Got unlimited milk, but. Uh, so like we've got fabrication three. So, we could make wooden clogs. That's simple. Okay. Didn't quite get us there, but... Is what it is. Let me drink some more of my delicious milk.
and we'll make um, a tobacco pipe. Okay, still didn't get us there. How about a wooden smoother? It's fucking 99%. Make another wooden smoother. There we go. We hit four. Now, still don't think we're going to be able to make... Oh, composite bow. Heavy. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Twelve strength. This is... This is much better. We need three bone glues or three super glue or 75 duct tape. Uh, bone glue is the only one I can really make conceivably at this point. Uh, the strings. You can always tear down more curtains. Bone glue, though. We'd have to level up our applied science. Which pretty much means... I guess I could just get water and turn it into salt water. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> uh, I suppose that'll wait until the melt goes bad. Okay, what else can I make? I can also make makeshift wooden arrows at this point, but again, you need... <sighs> I would need plastic... Like, everything's so abundant when you're near a town, when you're near a settlement. All this shit is so abundant. Although the thread, I don't know the easiest way to get thread at this point. With that rag change. Plant fiber's probably easier. Those are a lot better arrows, though. We actually get a, uh, a bonus to our damage by using them. Alright, so if I got the plant fiber, I could make one. Because I don't think there's any... Oh, wait. Here's this plastic. So it's plastic chunks right there. Uh, so with that, I could make two of these. Three of these. Three of these. So I can make 30 arrows. 30 solid arrows. If I got some plant fiber. So I think that's our goal here. Uh, there's cow pies here. I could make bricks out of. Isn't that delightful? Hmm. There's a water strider there. Piss off water strider. I'll shoot you with my cool bow. withered plant. This is not plant fiber. Does this... What the fuck is plant fiber then? Oh, that's from cattail stalks. Or dog bane. Like, I'm supposed to know what dog bane is. Okay, cattail stalks would be from the nearest swamp, which is all the way up here. I guess that's doable. Okay. With, uh... With auto travel, it's really not that time-consuming. Okay. Now we'll just uh, go through and pick some cattails. Cattail. 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 Tail. 
Get out of the water. Uh, plant fiber. Okay, so I have 17 stalks now. That's 170 plant fiber. That's probably good. Now that I stepped in the water a bunch of times. To that plant fiber done makeshift wooden arrows yep so I have something in my bottle I have something in the bottle where is that bottle I know you got a bottle it's probably in this first aid kit. Yep, it's the antiseptic. Uh, all right, just just make twenty of them. Okay. And there we got our 20 arrows. Drink our milk. Um, and yeah, I guess just go to bed for now. Forgot to make earplugs. Yeah, I forgot to make earplugs. Um, noise canceling headgear. Shit. I need. Our wax. Yeah. Uh, where do you get wax? What is. Oh, how, did, how does one get wax? What is wax? Hold on. What the fuck is wax? Why have I not... Oh, it's strictly from bees? Okay. Oh no, it says it's synthesized by many plants and animals. Best known animal wax is beeswax. Other insects also secrete waxes. Spermaceti? The head oil of the sperm whale. Plant waxes. Okay, well, I think as far as we're concerned, bees is probably the answer, but we're not going near any bees. So, uh, candle. I don't think I can even make. Oh, I could make if I had lard. Or... Yeah, or tallow. But I don't know if I can make any of that. No, I definitely can't. I don't even... No. No, 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 no. I can't make any of that. So, no. Which means that we have to go with the noise-canceling headgear. Which basically means... <sighs> More strings or plant fiber. 600 plant fiber. No, really no other option. And there's no way to escape the cows. Even with heavy sleeper, it's just too much. Oh, did we finally just pass out? All right, we finally made it to 5.40 a.m. That's good enough. And we still have got milk. 
Although, uh, you know, I've consumed a lot of liquid. It's not great. But I just can't... I can't cook much. I don't have any cooking tools. Made cook TV dinner. Okay. Uh, what were, what were we doing? What were we doing? Oh, the bow. The composite bow. Right, the bone glue. Oh, yeah. We're at this discussion still. Uh, alright. Take, uh... Milk should be practically done. So just dump out the milk. Um, I need water. Got water there? Not really. Water down here, but there's water striders down there. How close do I want to get? <laughs> Here are water striders. I offer milk as a sacrifice. Alright. Piss off. Soon I will slaughter all of you. With my great bow. My compound bow. Alright, so we've got... Uh, water. Now we can turn it into salt water. That didn't get us uh, anywhere, of course. So now we have to make soapy water. I think there should be detergent here. Nope, he doesn't have any detergent. Gosh, well that's about it then for applied science. There isn't much else I can do. I don't have a boiling tool. So I can't make salt. And I don't have any soap. So with that, our hopes and dreams of making the compound bow right now come to a close. There's earplugs right fucking here. Jesus. And what am I actually wearing? Hold on. I got uh, jeans, a knit scarf, hiking boots, and a t-shirt. And boy shorts. So I think if we compare boy shorts with work pants. Now, here's where you get really in-depth compared to Bright Nights. Bright Nights is, again, so simple compared to this. But if we look at all the stats. So, work pants. Uh, volume of 2 liters, weight of 1.15 pounds. Um, then we have like a, a ASCII kind of picture representation of what it covers. Uh, so you can see from the waist down to the ankles, obviously it's pants. Uh, total coverage is 95% of the legs. So it's not 100% coverage. I don't know how that works. What part of the legs it doesn't cover. But sure, um, it fits us, so that's good. Encumbrance is one, but when it's full, so the pockets are full, it goes up to two. Not a big deal. Um, and that's encumbrance on the legs, of course. Provides warmth of 15, again, to the legs. Breathability, 50% to the legs. I don't really know what that all factors into, aside from, like gases or something i don't know um protection for the legs it's made of cotton 0 0.30 millimeters thick coverage is normal so that could be you know that's sort of the layer of clothing whether it's close to the skin or whether it's meant to be an outer layer um 
And it says default 95. I have no idea what that means. Uh, I really, I really, I'm, I'm not sure. I guess, I guess that's related to the, the coverage. And then protection. So this would be actual armor for any sort of purpose. And this is negligible. So does not provide any sort of meaningful armor against an attack. Uh, so that's great. It's not armor, of course. It's just pants. Compare that to the boy shorts. Those cover 28% total of your legs. Um, and if you look down, you can see that 100% of the hips are covered, but only 20% of your thighs. And then down below that is nothing. So that's why it averages out, I guess, to 28% of your legs are covered. Um... Zero encumbrance, so it's got no pockets. Uh, it's not really much warm at all. Um, and it's even thinner. It's 0 0.10 millimeters thick. <laughs> but either way, it's negligible protection. I think we'd wear it, but mainly just because it provides a pocket. Um, and boy shorts are kind of funny. So, all right. Then we have a light jacket. We might as well just put that on. Although temperature, you know, it's way more concerning in this in this version. Uh, the tool belt, that's going to weigh us down quite a bit, so I'm not sure. We could swap our t-shirt for a long sleeve shirt, but it's sort of negligible either way. Let's compare the hiking boots to the boots. Um, hiking boots are warmer. It's the same coverage, but the boots actually provide better armor. So this is the protection values now. So it's for the boots, it's 2.5 bash protection, 7.5 cut protection, 5 ballistic protection, and 2 environmental. And then you can see it breaks it down further than that. So um, you got the bottoms of the feet. There's no protection there because you're never actually going to get attacked on the bottom of your foot. Um ankles oh no actually i'm i'm sorry it does provide protection values for the bottoms of your feet i don't know why i don't again i don't know maybe if you're prone i don't know well, i mean i guess acid the acid for that is key uh so both are good for acid but the ankles foot arches heels toes um that's all better protection than the hiking boots Yeah, I mean, it really goes in-depth. I thought the game was crazy when I first played, but it's really... It's getting nuts, baby. Alright, so let's put on the boots. Um, From there, I think we're just going to leave it off. I think that's good for a first video. We killed some zombies with a bow. Uh, we're working on a compound bow now, in theory. Uh, we're alive. It's all great. Actually, we should patch ourselves up a little bit better. Uh, we should actually... You can practice bandaging. But we're already at healthcare one. The wound care proficiency, I guess, is good. And then we could make makeshift bandages. And practice with those. Okay, so we do that, and then we do this, and then we do this. And we practice with the makeshift bandage. And we keep practicing until our proficiency increases. Which, god damn, it takes a while. There you go. So then we're proficient in wound care. And then you can do the advanced practice. And there you go. Now we got health care too. So now if we did the adhesive bandage. It's still very poor. But we could use... 
More makeshift bandages. And those would get us up to poor healing. There you go. Nice little improvement for us. Anyways, yeah, there's just so much to this game now. Well, there's always been so much to this game, but it's getting... Yeah, it, it's just, like, fucking imagine what Cataclysm will be like in 20 years. Absolutely insane. Yeah, makes me very giddy just thinking about it. But alright, uh, we'll leave it off here for now. Um, I don't think I'll play it all on my own, because there's just... We're in the very early stages here, and it's not like I can do a whole lot. And we don't want to do a whole lot. We don't want to pass that much time uh, before we get out into the world, because we don't want things to evolve. So we gotta get, we gotta get out there. We gotta get out there. But all right, my name is Mang. This has been Cataclysm. I'll see you fine folks in the next part.